Hey guys, um, we just spent five days in Oahu, and that was our first time in Oahu. Oahu. We usually go to Maui or Kauai, but um, Southwest had some really good deals for airfare to Oahu, and it was like two forty a person. So we decided to go. And so you'll fly in to um, the airport here, and then we stayed at. Uh, this area right let's see where were we oh yeah we're over here we stayed at the modern Honolulu um, which uh, was okay I wouldn't say great but it was okay um, the the rating is a 4.1 on on uh, Google and I would say that's about accurate the price that you see on Google is not accurate because they ought to add on a $35 a day um, resort fee and then uh, parking I think is another $35 a night now we took an uber from the airport to here so the airport is over here and the hotel was about here and that uber is about $20 to $50 depending on the time of day and the amount of traffic there is um, we came in kind of midday early afternoon where there wasn't much traffic so it's about $23 for the uber and after looking it over, we, I decided not to rent a car. And I think that was kind of the best decision we made. Um, renting a car uh, is a hassle because you have to, the traffic is pretty bad in Oahu. And the parking situation isn't great, especially at a lot of the places that are going to be popular to go to. And then you have to pay for um, parking every night if you stay near Waikiki, which most people are going to be staying near Waikiki. So anyways, we uh, came in and we checked into our hotel and then we wanted to um, go get something quick to eat. And so there is this large shopping center called Ala Moana Center. And we went there and we had something simple. We went to, let's see, if you go in here, hmm, see if you can find it. Yeah, right here. I believe this is the place we went to. Yeah, uh, Gomate Ramen. It was pretty good. Yeah, we had some, uh, we're vegetarian and vegan mostly. And so our food options are based on that. So if you're a vegetarian or vegan, that's going to be helpful. If you're not, probably our recommendations aren't great for you. But we had some vegan um, uh, tantan ramen there and it was excellent. It was very good. And, um, and then my daughter had the cold udon noodles, which was also very good with this uh, sesame sauce. Then we went a few doors down and got some um, uh, pinsu, which is like Korean shaved ice at this uh, Jeju Bin dessert cafe. Um, also was, was quite good. Then, so we just walked there. This is not very far, um, probably quarter mile. It's a quick five minute walk to go there. And then um, we went for a walk down Waikiki. This is the harbor next to the hotel. So this is, there's some, you know, it's a nice view. The harbor, if you get close up to it, it the, the water's not extremely clean or anything. There's some trash in there. It's not terrible, but it's, um, you know, it's definitely not pristine. Um, and then uh, the next morning I woke up and went for a run. This is the hotel um pool in the morning everything looks much nicer in the morning uh, they do a good job of cleaning up the beach and everything um after the tourists go to bed and uh, the beach looks nice and clean the next day and here's waikiki beach it's uh well this is not actually waikiki beach this is actually this beach which is um you know i cannot pronounce these names uh, Kahanamoku Beach and Fort Derusi Beach. So um, that first picture was, uh, let's see. Yeah, this picture, this is a lagoon, which is by the Hilton. And that's this right here. And so you, we were, we were walking down along this, this boardwalk. And then we go, went, went down this beach. And then Waikiki Beach is actually way down here. And this is where the surfing is. And a uh, funny story is that we stayed five days in this area and never, ever went into the water in any of these nearby beaches here. Um, which, it was really crowded. And 
and not the not the kind of beaches that we like. We like more secluded beaches uh, with less people and then with some snorkeling involved. So let's see. Let me clear out these things so that uh, I don't hit those again. Okay, so the next morning uh, we went and got some acai bowls at Sunrise Shack. And that was also, let's see, I think it was down here someplace. Um, somewhere down in here, but easily walkable. Sunrise Shack, it was pretty good. Um, so I definitely I would give it a thumbs up. A little pricey, but you know, it's a touristy thing. Then we went to Diamond Head. And so I, I was thinking initially that we would walk to Diamond Head. Uh, my, you know, my family's okay with walking quite a bit, but I, I ran to Diamond Head in the morning and I figured it, this, this, this walk along here to Waikiki is fairly scenic and fun to do. This walk from here to here is not that fun. It's uphill, goes through a residential area. It's not very scenic. So um, we decided to get the, um, get the bus and the, you can take the bus and it'll drop you off right here, which is great. And then we walked along in here. And once you get into, into the tunnel here and try to park in here, if you drove your car here, number one, you have to pay for parking. And then two, um, parking is impossible. I saw people circling the parking lot for like 30 minutes trying to find parking. So if you don't want to mess with that, I would park out here or down here more and then walk in um and uh save yourself the hassle it is a little bit of a walk but that's fine and then from here there's a little fee that you have to pay to do this hike and then you can go to the hike of um diamond head crater it's a very it's relatively easy hike uh, it's paved all the way so the footing is good lots of people are on it so it's a little bit crowded but but not too bad um and you get some really nice views from the top. So here's the view of the beaches looking south. And here's the beach. Uh, this is Waikiki and the um, other beaches here. And you can see that the, 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 it's hard to tell in this picture, but the beaches here, it's, it's much greener and the, it, the water is clearer than the waters around Waikiki. And then we saw this lighthouse, and this is Diamond Head um, Beach. And this looked nice, so we decided to take um, a bus back to here. We went home and then got some beach stuff, and we, we, we rode the bus back here, and the bus will drop you off fairly close to you. It drops you off actually right here. And um, you can we checked out this beach, and that is... Um, that is be this beach right here, Diamond Head Beach Park. This beach was actually, I thought, pretty nice. Not too many people. A lot of surfers there. Um, and uh, seemed to be mostly a local beach. Uh, there were some good tide pools. And um, the one downside, I think, of the beach was that uh, the, the snorkeling definitely was not good. And then two, there's a lot of dogs at this beach and people don't clean up after their dogs. So you kind of have to dodge some dog poop once in a while. It's not a lot, but you definitely run into it uh, once in a while. So um, be aware of that. Uh, so this is uh, some shots of that beach. Here's the surfers over here. And there were some really nice tide pools here and lots of cool little animals and small fish in there. It's, it's just, it's beautiful. Uh, later on that night, we went to this um, restaurant called Dagen, and uh, that is somewhere in this area. So we somewhere in this area, Dagen. Okay, here it is. Yeah, right here. Um, Dagen four point four. This is. In my opinion, this was our favorite restaurant. Um, it's kind of in, not in the. It's kind of in a um, little bit more uh, less touristy part of town, but um, you do need reservations. They were very nice and seated us without reservations, but it helps to get reservations. And we had the uh, the tea leaf salad, which was this. It was 
delicious. And we had this soup, also delicious. Um, and this was the their uh, Burmese Indian rice, also good. Everything was excellent. So um, if you're if you like, um, if you, I, we've never tried Burmese food, it's a little bit like Indian food, a little bit like Thai food. Um, it was great. We loved it. We actually went back twice to this place, which is the only restaurant we went back to twice, and um, would highly recommend it. Um, and then the next day we went to Lanikai Beach. And Lanikai Beach was probably uh, one of the most scenic beaches we've ever seen. Uh, it's just the, the water, you know, you know, this picture is terrible because it, we took it at a cloudy time. Um, but yeah, the, the water is beautiful. It's, there are people there, but it's not, it's not that crowded. Um, it's just, there's, there's enough, you you won't have the beach to yourself, but you'd never feel crowded in by pe other people. And so Lanikai beach is actually over here. So there's a city called Kailua and just south of there is Lanikai beach. The, the thing here is this is all residential area and you can't park here. So if you want to, if you're going to drive, you need to park at like Kailua beach and then walk over. Or, I mean, we took the bus and the bus was perfect. So we took the bus and we got food at this air, this place called the Food Company. It was very reasonable. Uh, the We got food for like $8 a person, which is really cheap. And it was great food. They had um, meat and vegetarian options. We got the vegetarian options, which were good. We had tofu and rice and things like that. And it was, it was great. And they packaged it up. And then we took the bus from there to Lanikai Beach, spent the day, uh, did some snorkeling, actually pretty decent snorkeling at Lanikai Beach. There's some reefs there and uh, quite a few fish. Visibility isn't great, but um, uh, but lots of people kayaking to the um, to these two islands that you see in the picture. And um, there are some there are pillbox hikes that are which are popular here, which we did not do. Um, instead, we went later on that day and did what's called the uh, Three Peaks hike. And that is, let's see, I'm trying to figure out where that is. Oh, okay, here we go, right here. Okay, there it is. Yeah, so this is the... Um, Olomana Ridge hike and it goes what you do is you have to park here and this is a um, This is a road to a private uh, Golf course, but they'll let you in there's no problems and then as you walk up There's a sign that heads to the left and then it goes onto this ridge trail You can't miss it. There's a fairly obvious sign as you go up this road But you have to park here or we took the bus the bus drops you off right here and then you just cross this road and then you just walk in here. And so this hike is, uh, I would say if you, if you are scared of heights, maybe not the best. There is, are, there is some rock climbing and uh, people put ropes on there, but the ropes are not completely dependable. And then the very, I would say 100 to 200 yards of it is on this very narrow ridge that um, has a sheer drop off on both sides and it's fairly windy up there at the top. So mm, it was a little sketchy for me. I'm a little scared of heights, but um, if you're not scared of heights, it's fine. Um, I've done Angel's Landing in Zion and I thought it was much scarier than Angel's Landing. Uh, and um, But the views are incredible. So here, here's the, it's very lush on this side of the island. Uh, and then uh, he, as you climb up, you get views um, a little bit higher. You go through this kind of pine forest part of it, which is really nice because it's got a lot of pine leaves and uh, it's not muddy. The first part of it's very muddy and it was not even a rainy day. So if it was raining, I think it'd be extremely difficult, very slippery and very rainy. Um, 
this is the it's it's a very steep grade but this is kind of the not as steep part of the thing and then you have to climb these rocks like this there's a rope here um this this one isn't bad uh and then a lot of the hiking is like this if this was muddy i would say it's very slippery and then you get towards the top you get um, views like this which are incredible amazing views but the very last part there is uh, a kind of a cliff you have to climb it's like a 20 foot cliff uh it's it's doable um but if you're if you're scared of heights and you don't like exposure probably not the best hike for you um you get an amazing view of this area once you get to the top i'm sorry the uh the video is a little shaky but yeah there's a there's a sheer drop off on both sides of this and then if you want to do the second and third uh, peak, those are the second and third peaks. We decided not to do those. We were kind of running out of time and it looked like it might rain and we definitely didn't want to come down in the rain. So then we, we came down off the mountain, took the bus back and um, had some dinner that night. So that night we went and ate at this restaurant called Tain Vegan Isakaya. Or Tane Vegan Isekai. I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, it is a vegan Japanese restaurant where they have vegan sushi and ramen and things like that. And I've never had vegan sushi before. And I thought, you know, how's it going to be? Am I just going to have like steamed carrots over rice? Um, and I wasn't expecting a lot. It was pretty pricey. So um, I wasn't sure what to expect. But... Um, we ordered the ceviche uh, and then we had some summer rolls and then we had some of their specialty rolls and the food was beautiful looked amazing and tasted amazing like uh, i was blown away uh we did it was pricey we spent 120 dollars for three people and that's with no drinks or anything that's just food um, so these, these rolls are like $18. So it's not, it's not an inexpensive place, but if you're vegan or vegetarian, you owe it to yourself to try this out, splurge and try it out. It is, um, it is excellent. It's very good. So let me clear these out so I don't hit them again. And then the next day. Uh, we spent the morning doing uh, this timeshare presentation at the Modern Honolulu. Do not do that. They will promise you um, like a seven night stay at uh, one of their resorts. That is not true. They, what they do is they give you a voucher for this company that then you have to pay them extra money to get these um, uh, rooms at these resorts, which it's, it's not worth the hassle. Anyways, my daughter wanted to sleep in and so it wasn't that big of a deal they gave us a um gift certificate to morton steakhouse which you know for vegetarian vegan people wasn't a, a big thing for us either um, we ended up eating at morton's that night um, after this um, presentation which was a mistake because um, i mean i had the steak i know i i do eat meat once in a while the steak was good but everything else was you know not not great to our liking uh, that morning, I went for a run along the uh, the the river here, and that's this area right here. Um, it's beautiful. It's a nice run going down this thing, so it's quite scenic in the morning. Um, and then uh, we went to Pearl Harbor, um, which is something I think everyone should do when they're there. And there's, a, there's several things you can do at Pearl Harbor. There's the main museum and visitor center. That's what we ended up doing. There's the USS Arizona Memorial, which we wanted to do, and it's free, but uh, you have to reserve at least 72 hours in advance, and we did not reserve in advance, and it was completely booked. And then there is a um, there is the USS Missouri uh, Battleship Museum, and there is a submarine museum and a naval aviation museum. Uh, those you have to pay for. My family wasn't too interested in doing those. So we just did the uh, museum, which was great. We learned a lot. And um, you get a good um, view of the Pearl Harbor attack from the American and Japanese perspective. And then one of the things I liked the best was um, this little display where they talked about 
how the Japanese in um, Hawaii joined the military or, you know, they, they went to serve afterward. And there was a lot of... Um, uh, there was a lot of mistrust of Japanese at that time. You guys remember the internment camps and things like that. And they said, do your, you know, this is the, uh, the Japanese young men were sent away with uh, the messages like this from their fathers, you know, do your best for your country, die if you must live if you can, but whatever you do, do not bring shame to the family, your country and the honor of your family comes first. So that, that was quite poignant. Then that evening we went to Ala Moana beach, which is, a beach that's right close to our hotel. So, um, again, the, our hotel was the modern Honolulu. And then there is this harbor here. And then just across this bridge is this Ala Moana Beach and Ala Moana Regional Park. This beach has a reef across here. And this is the calmest beach I've ever seen. So, if you like a really calm, chill beach, that's the beach to go to. And so this is what the beach looks like. It's like a swimming pool. There's no waves whatsoever. It's perfectly still. Water is very clear, very clean. It seems more of like a local's beach. It was not crowded. And um, people will, will come here and they go swimming and paddle boarding and things like that. Um, so let me clear some of this out. And so that was, um, yeah, it was a, it's a really pretty beach. Went here to watch the sunset. Sunset was not great because uh, it was raining over here and so it blocked the sun. So the sunset was not a, not a great sunset that night, unfortunately. But it is a very nice beach. And if you just want a really chill beach to relax and swim and, uh, and paddleboard maybe, this is the one to go to. And it's very close to Waikiki. So if you're staying in this area, um, you just go west a little bit and you can go to this Ala Moana beach, which is a, a great beach, I think. So we went to Morton's that night, which I told you is, wasn't great. Next morning, we got an Uber. So those are kind of our last day. We got, a, not an Uber, we got a Turo and we did a drive around the island. So we just drove like this and drove this route. Then we stopped by uh, Hii, I don't know how to pronounce that, State Park, and I'll, we'll talk about that. And then we drove all the way around here, went to the North Shore, and then drove back down. So we did kind of a big circle that day. Um, rented a Turo, which is the only day that we had a car because we wanted to do a lot of driving. This was the blowhole. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a blowhole down here someplace. Uh, and that was kind of fun. I think it's Holona. Yeah, the Holona blowhole lookout. So that was, it's, it's, it's really uh, quite nice down in that area. And then we went to uh, this park right here. And then let me, let me switch this to satellite view so I can tell you guys. So we went to here, and this uh, Kama Aina Kayak and Snorkel Echo Adventures, this agency actually seems like they're affiliated with the state park because they're just in there. So the state park opens at 8, and we arrived at 8 o'clock. So we got a very early start and then uh, rented some kayaks. Kayaks are uh, $80 for a double and and $60 for a single. So we rented one double and a single, and um, the tide was out. So usually you can launch here and go straight like this way, but this is a reef that's very shallow, so we had to go this way and circle all the way around. Now, our initial plan was to go to this place called the uh, sandbar. And it's this is like, you'll, you'll hear about this. There's a big sandbar here, people like set up, you know, volleyball nets and they just hang out. It's a really chill place to hang out um, and people like it. However, we wanted to do snorkeling and so we did not go to the sandbar and we went to this area. So we went, cycled around here, we went to this and these are reefs and these are basically a sandbar in the middle of the reef. So over here, there's just a sandbar Okay, and there may be some reefs around the edges, but this is just a whole sandbar. Here, you have to find little inlets, like right in here between the reefs to get into the sandbar. But once you get in, this is just sand, and you can just walk around in sand. And so it's very much like the sandbar. However, 
this right here, this was the best snorkeling in all of Oahu, right here. So we checked out um, the uh, Shark's Cove. That was pretty good. It's great if you're a kid. It's very easy snorkeling. Um, but the, there's not that many fish. This one had the most variety of fish. Also, we ran into five turtles during this kayak trip. And there was a turtle here, like, swam within a few feet of us. Um, so that was really cool. And um, these are little holes where the um, where they dropped bombs on here and bomb testing. And they blew out little holes in the reef. And now they, they, they turn into little pools. So I'll show you guys what this looks like. Um, so we're going out there. It's, it was a, the kayaking was very nice. Um, and then here's the sandbar where you can just stand in it. And it's, it's about knee deep. And let me see, I think this is a video. Yeah, so this is, this is a video. And the water is crystal clear. It's beautiful. And you can see we're about a mile away from any kind of shore. And the other amazing thing is we were the only people there. There was, there was no one else there. So we had the whole thing to ourselves um, for about two hours. Which is amazing to have any place by yourself. Um, in Oahu for two hours. And you get a great view of the mountains. And th that's the, uh, that's, I think over here, it, oh yeah, this is the marine base. And then there's like a little island right here. So you have these large expanses of sand. Anyway, I highly recommend. This was like the most fun thing we did. Uh, after two hours in, some other paddlers showed up, but there were just, there were, I think it was us and like seven other people on, on in this whole area. It, it was incredible, actually. This is the reefs. And when the tide came up, you can actually, you can actually paddle over the reefs. It's, there's, it's only like, maybe 10 inches of water over the reefs, but your kayak can float over it when the uh, tide is up. So the tide came up um, by the time we were leaving. And then we went up, um, drove around the North Shore we ate, let's see, where did we eat? So we kept driving around here, um, went up this way. There is Kaloa Ranch. That's a very popular um, touristy thing. They have like ATV tours and zip lines. We did not do that. And then the other thing that people do is um, they do the Polynesian Cultural Center. That's another popular thing. We didn't end up doing that. There is um, a farm stand called Kahuku Farm Stand, which we wanted to go to, but unfortunately was closed on the day we were there. And then um, we got into this area. Uh, I think we're over in here. Oh yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's an area right here with a, it's a really cute area with a bunch of food trucks and stuff, and we ate at the Taro taro hut right here that was that was pretty good yeah quite good 4.9 rating so we, we went there and then there's a um willy willy shaved ice which was okay we tried lahaina shaved ice willy willy's shaved ice a couple other shaved ice the best shaved ice place is Wailola Wailola shaved ice um, which we'll talk about then we drove along here um then we went to uh, this banyan tree and the Turtle Bay pillbox. Um, stopped at another farm stand. Had this Chico fruit, which we've never had before, which was interesting. And then there was also some um, ice cream bananas. 
also good this is the pill box turtle bait pill box and then this is the best shaved ice in in uh in Honolulu, Wailoa shaved ice. Evidently, Obama likes this is his favorite shaved ice, and this is his flavor. I think the flavor we liked the best was coconut with uh, uh, passion fruit on top. There's a passion, or, or was it pog? I think it was pog with some kind of passion fruit puree on top. That was amazing. So this is definitely the best shaved ice. Uh, in our opinion, the other shaved ice kind of tastes artificial flavor. This one tastes more um, natural. The uh, the best shaved ice in Maui is Ululani shaved ice, and this is very similar. Next day, we had some um, uh, acai bowls from uh, Tribal. Uh, what was it? I think it was called Tribal Ventures or something. Let me let me see if I can find them. Is right across the street from our hotel. Yeah, so here is the modern Honolulu. Yeah, Tropical Tribe. This is it. They were very good. Uh, so this is their Tropical Tribe acai bowls. And then uh, we had to fly home. And here's our flight out of the thing. So anyways, I hope that was helpful for you guys to plan your vacation. Um, if you made it all the way through this video, congratulations. I know I, I kind of rambled a bit, but um, those are the things that we did. And I think that the kayaking um, in the bay was definitely the, the coolest thing that we did. The hike, um, the, two, the three peaks hike is great, but um, you have to not be scared of um, heights. And this is definitely the best snorkeling here. If you can make it out here, you have it to yourself. It is bar none the best snorkeling in Oahu. And uh, Lanikai, probably the most scenic beach that we've been to. And then my, I highly recommend using the bus rather than the um, that than a car if you are okay with using public transit. Google Maps makes it very easy to to find your routes. You do have to be willing to carry all your gear in a backpack and sit or, and wait at bus stops. But you're gonna wait in traffic and um, search for parking if you drive a car. So th that's the trade-off. Okay, thanks for watching. And um, if you have any comments or questions, put them below and I'll try to answer them.